Stream time. What? Stream time. See you figured out. You didn't have battery plug in, did you? Oh, called it. Called it. Called it. Yeah? Tell her how? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You gonna get, uh, you gonna come over and play some, uh, South Park? It's ladies night and Micah feeling right. Micah's got a dress. He's going home. Oh, oh. Yeah. What's up, Ian? DNM? Marway? Greg? Hello. Micah's going out to make all the hay the ladies moist. The Haiti ladies. The Haitian ladies moist. What's up, Trinity? Alright, so I'm finishing up an uh, iPhone right now. I'll talk about this in a little bit just so you all kind of have an idea of what to look for uh, if you run into this problem. This was an iPhone 6 that had no microphones at all, top or bottom. Uh, Siri couldn't hear you. Phone calls, people couldn't hear you. Um, so this solution for this one was the audio I see seemed to have had a physical damage I guess caused to it uh, which was keeping the solder balls from making connection so a quick reflow actually fix that what's up Martin's here Spectre's here flash repair services is here so anyway uh, this one had no microphones. The audio IC was not connected to the board properly. A quick reflow of the audio IC. We now have microphones again. So that's something to look out for. If you don't have any microphones at all, take a look at the, uh, the audio IC. What's up, Nate? I've got... Got some iPads I have to do soon. I really don't want to do because they're gonna be a pain. But we'll knock them out soon. Finish putting this back together. Fancy a flame war? About what? Ooh. Don't connect the battery when you're working around it. <laughs> you make sparks. I just shorted the power pad here to this ground post. I didn't like that. What? My tweezer hit that power spot and grounded it to the to standoff. Oh, God. It probably singed my tweezer a little bit. Yeah, right there on the end of it. It's blackened. <clears throat> so what not to do? Don't hook up your battery until you're done. So let's put our screws back in this cover. Make sure it still turns on. Maybe it won't. iPhone 6 Plus won't be sending back or refund a customer. I guess I'll just use it. Don't worry. Uh, what was wrong with it, Nate? Did you do TriStar on it? How much of your shit is unfixable? Uh, to be honest, it's uh, it's next on the list. It hasn't been opened yet, so I won't know until I open it. Which will be tonight or tomorrow morning. We fix them as they come in. Although I feel like I should open Anthony's because it probably has food in it that's going bad. It's probably shipped like a, a cake or something in there. All right, let's make sure this thing still turns on. All right, we're good. Cool. All right, so let's move on to our six plus boot loop. Tell 
tempered glass and installing them? Yeah, I mean, if you have good quality ones, they'll sit down on their own. You don't really have to do much at all. You had a customer call about two of the devices in the boxes? It sounds like the guy that's waiting on the MacBook that we've been working on. Some people will have to understand that this shit isn't instant, ever. I wish it was. I mean, hell, if I could do them immediately and get paid for them, I'd love it. No time spending them, they're just fucking in and out. You have one in your queue, Ashes? Ah, uh, Nate, if you want to send it back, I can look at it, dude. I don't know why it would why it would all of a sudden stop working. The only thing I can think is maybe maybe there's just like a cap that went bad. That's possible. A constant amperage draw is usually something that has has gone bad and is just pulling amperage constantly. Forty thirteen is that NAND or race fan? Normally I get six four five two minutes. Uh forty thirteen. I don't know. It's a hard one. I've got one here that's um, scoops sent in that was a 4013 and we put a new NAND on it and after restoring it came back with baseband negative one error. Then after reballing baseband it came back and restored properly but still has no IMEI number. I don't know how it did that but evidently it will let you restore without the IMEI number ever showing up. My suspicions on the one from scoop is that the uh, the baseband may be shot itself because it doesn't make any sense the baseband allowed it to restore and finish but has no IMEI number all right so first things first we're gonna check TriStar on this phone TriStar is working we're getting a Apple logo that will shut off and then it'll loop again and do it over and over so let's see what we're getting when we plug it in what our amperage looks like. Okay, so the battery's dead. And it's charging. So this is gonna be a boring stream. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and bypass this part and just see if we can get it to boot first. Maybe this is a battery problem. So we'll hook up the DC power spot and see if we can get it to boot. How often are they actually baseband? Uh, sometimes. Not always. I'm not saying that baseband is a problem, but like baseband related. Take anything that I say as a general area to look. It's not a please, but please, bro, solution. Which uh, rework station won? I don't know if any of them necessarily won. Um, I just kind of proved that the AU is not a complete piece of shit, <laughs> which it's not. Turn it on for a second, it'll heat it up. Okay. Alright, so we'll see if this thing turns on. Alright, the amperage draw looks normal. So we will see if it will boot up. Try and update through 3U. On this phone, I will. That's always the first thing I do anytime it's boot looping. We're going to see if it'll boot up though first. I haven't been paying attention to see if it's turned off or on yet. turned on now the battery percentage is reading very low which is odd because usually with this plugged in it reads like 80 90 percent right now it's reading very low that's well now it's up to 50 percent okay so I don't think the issue is that it's boot looping. I think we have a power problem. 
I did touch IC on this one and supposedly it was boot looping a couple weeks later. Um, but I think it's battery. Alright, so I'm going to take this one off of power. I'm going to shut it down. Uh, what version of iOS? It's 11 something. Uh, looks like it's 11.03. Yeah, it's 11.03. Have you seen this? 6 Plus works great when off and plugged in the USB. It boots normally, but power reason. Normal for a few seconds and then zero. Pull, replug, charges normally. Uh, Nate, that's probably TriStar related. Could be charge port, but most likely TriStar. TriStar, whenever the phone boots, it, uh, whenever it goes down and back up like it's supposed to, that's when TriStar is kind of power cycling when it gets reset. There's a reset line whenever the phone boots. So, let's uh, hook up the DC power supply here again, and I'm going to charge this phone, and we'll see if it is the battery or not. My guess is it is the battery. It would make sense to be the battery. i got to get new cables for my DC inboard, it, or the amperage meter, because it's starting to take a shit on me. All right, plug it in, and we'll let it charge. Okay, now it's booting up with the battery plugged in. And it's boot looping now. So, yeah, I think this is definitely, like, 100% battery. Let me disconnect it, make sure that the battery is fully seated. Okay, because a second ago it said it was charging and it was pulling a full amp. Now it's pulling 300 milliamps and it's trying to boot up. And it's not going over 300 milliamps and it's looping. So let me grab a battery real quick and test this. I'm fairly confident this is battery problem. I think this is a 6 plus right here. Nope, 6S plus. Let me go grab a 6 plus battery to test this with. Place the NAND today, but the iPhone can't be activated. By Wi Fi or iTunes. Did you make sure when you transferred the NAND that you transferred all the information correctly? Because that's usually what happens if you messed up like the, the Wi Fi or the Bluetooth MAC address or something, or the serial number or anything like that. You cannot change any of the information. You did, it's not your first time? Well, we've had people on the stream that have done multiples and they accidentally messed something up. Just a suggestion. That's the only reason it wouldn't activate. It's not a, not normally a problem with Apple. Let's see if it loops on us or not. It did the iOS 11 loop. Nope, it just chimed and said it was on. Let's see if it shows an image. Ta-da! So this is a battery problem. Evidently, battery problem. You hear Micah jerking it with a maraca? Well, I do my part of time. 
Uh, the phone is now pulling 800 milliamps, 850 right in that range. It's at 50% charge. That's completely normal for this kind of thing. Um, I'd really like to get this battery here charged up so I could show clear proof that this is a battery problem. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I would like to show with ZXW, or not ZXW3U, that this is a battery problem, but I don't think this battery is going to let me charge it because it just keeps looping. Um, I had one earlier today that was doing this that was looping and it was battery also. Um, they sent it in for TriStar, but TriStar was fine. <clears throat> Maybe if I let it loop long enough, it'll get enough charge on the battery to actually boot up. What is that loop anyway? Oh, yeah, it was ultrasonic. Micah was running an iPhone 6 through. Should you replace NAND if you got Air 9 on a 6S? Uh, have you ruled out anything else that can cause it first? If, it, if you have, then yeah, it's probably NAND. You have to replace it with a good NAND, though. Uh, Alright, so... What? How do you know what temp is that? There should be a top and bottom number. The top says 60 and the yep. bottom says 48. Okay, so the 48 is actual temperature. So why does it need to be that? It has to warm up to 60. Because it takes forever. It's warming water. You already ran it through. Why are you worried about it? Oh, you just ran the cycle? Yeah, I just ran the cycle. Oh. Because it said it warm it up faster. It does, it moves the water around. Yeah. Open up finches fuckeries? Okay. I'm done with all the other ones, so. This one was, I'm not gonna charge them for it since evidently it was my fault. I did a backlight repair on this one and somehow that damaged the audio I see on the opposite side on the opposite side. So, other side of the board, opposite side of the board from where I was working and the side that was directly under where I was working didn't have any solder balls but evidently I caused it I don't know home button not working iPad Air Micah wants to take that apart oh, fuck. god Micah's excited y'all oh. hear him? he's so excited this one's screen. I don't know why they keep sending this back to me. I've already said it's screen. Finches fuckery. New phrase. Let's open up Finches on live stream. It's like Unbox Therapy here. If you haven't watched Unbox Therapy, you should. It's pretty, pretty uh, interesting to watch. Let's see what we have in this package. What's in the fuckery in here? iPod 6 Gen, headphones stuck in jack, kid tried to use Elmer's glue to get out. Please use invoice number 666 when invoicing. iPhone 6, when you put battery in, will come on and drops to 1% and dies. Pretty sure TriStar. I would agree. It's probably TriStar iPod, LCD replacement 4 Gen, black front camera, a little dirty. You want me to do the camera replacement here? What do you want me to do? Replace the camera? Gotta be specific. The issue is it needs a screen replacement? We can do that. Why am I fucking things up? I don't know. I do all the time. That's what I do. I fuck up a lot of shit. Evidently, according to Facebook, I'm also uneducated. Highly uneducated. <laughs> Laughably uneducated. Oh, I thought the phone was going to turn on for a second. It got a little further in the boot process. 
Okay. We can we can handle that, Anthony. This is what I have to deal with with Anthony, by the way. The one phone. One phone for all this. One phone. It's the size of my head. One phone. One phone. And that, I don't even know how you got all this in this box. Like, how does this work? And then there's more bubble wrap in here. More. You got a laugh out of reading the exchange earlier? Ouch. What can you do? Can't can't reason with people sometimes. Can't reason with some people. I just thought the funniest thing in that whole conversation, Martin, was the fact that I was told that I was just going to name call somebody and that's all I was going to do, which I hadn't. And then I proceeded to get called names. It kind of made me chuckle. I did I did like the Santa laugh where my whole like fat body moved. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm opening this one. TriStar. <laughs> Got me all fucked up over here, Micah. Fucked up, You'd hate to get a Christmas present from Anthony? You'd never be able to open it. It would just be like one of those fake presents where it's a box inside a box, but it's just bubble wrap. Layer of layer after bubble wrap. Uh, it's on uh, Jim's personal Facebook page. Jim likes to post things on Facebook that he knows will get a reaction out of people. And then if, if you react to it, it, it surprises him, I guess, at some times. Stop, stop messing with you. I don't, I mean, that's the thing, like, I don't, like, none of that stuff really bothers me. I'm sure some of those people in real life I get along with perfectly fine, it's just... When you're on the internet, people just like to fucking turn into different people and act like assholes. Alright, so with it plugged in, no battery hooked up, we are getting a zero amp draw. I, I will say this, and I don't mean it as an insult, but Jim is the most closeted Trump supporter I've ever seen. I don't think he actually likes him, but he agrees and, and supports everything he does. It's kind of funny. Alright, just to check, we'll try a new charge port. Uh, there is no change. It's exactly the same. No, I didn't. I don't look at Jim's page much. It's just whenever stuff comes up in, on the feed. Uh, that's one thing I think people on Facebook, whenever I talk to them on Facebook, they think that I'm like actively looking for their posts, and it, it's not how it is. I just, I get bored sometimes and scroll through and then see something that interests me that I, I can have a conversation about and see what people think, and then it goes into, usually goes into a debate or argument, I guess. I don't know, is it a debate if one side just insults you? The battery may be bad. Okay. We'll test it. Make sure. What's up, Wayne? Wayne, the main brain McCain. What are you working on? Sitting? You working on holding that chair down? Here you go. Take this iPad Air apart. Oh, you love oh, iPad Air. Oh, well, guess what? Three. <laughs> three iPads, Micah. All three, three of them. The stream has gone into the crapper because I said Trump's name? Nah. Although today's events, I, I don't really understand what he's trying to do, but... It's almost like Trump, like, if he doesn't have some type of controversy going on, 
He has to make one for himself. Like, why can't he just shut up and do his fucking job? Waiting for Donald to nuke North Korea? It'll probably happen. That's the sad part. I don't... I think North Korea, their leader, it, uh, is a complete douchebag. And probably needs to be taken off this earth for the social injustice against his own fucking people. But at the same time, I feel like nuclear war is, is not something that we need to resort to unless absolutely necessary. I mean, he's doing all this shit over there for attention. And, and Donald Trump has been hooked easily by it, which is not surprising. You almost shipped an entire iMac today? You all were going to pull the board. I told you to pull the board. First hurricane in 50 years here. No such thing as global warming. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. I mean, I don't know what the effects of global warming are going to be, but to say it doesn't exist is just like closing your eyes and making loud noises. Global warming's a myth. Evidently. Evidently, global warming is a myth and the earth's flat. <clears throat> What's up, Mark? i got to make Mark a moderator. Hold on. See, I remembered Mark. I gotta log into the face, the YouTube's, the two views, because I can't do it from my chat thingy. You all may hear feedback from the live stream. All right, Mark. There you go. Thank you for all your support, by the way, Mark. Much appreciated. Mark, if you ever want to post anything, um, for anybody that has, like, any PTSD stuff, feel free. I have no problem with you putting that up in stream. So I've got my temperature turned down. We're going to take this back shield off. Uh, I don't run a high temperature, so this isn't going to fly off in 9 seconds. Uh, it usually takes about 15 seconds at lower temps. I'm sure somebody will see this and be like, See? Ha! AU took forever to take off that shield. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> YouTube dicking with their live chat. I wish YouTube would just suck up their ego and be like, damn, Twitch has a good chat feed. We definitely need to fucking copy their shit. Alright, so Trustar. Trustar is currently hidden under our mound of goodness right here. Uh, Mark is a, I, I, well, I don't want to speak for Mark. I don't know exactly what he does, but he deals with uh, he himself and uh, other soldiers. He deals with helping them. So Mark can explain it to you. He's he's talked to me about it, but I fully support, especially the soldiers that come back from war. I have several friends that that have dealt with minor PTSD issues, but nothing. Like some of these guys do, or or women, and is it okay? So I fully support anything that Mark wants to post about it. Um, if there's anybody you know, if Mark posts something up that you think would be helpful, uh, feel free to share it with them.
her cables got hot when she was trying to charge this phone. Jesus. <laughs> At the, like, to me, if I plugged in, like, I had a cheap wall charger and it got warm one time when I was charging my phone. I was like, fuck this. I threw it away. <laughs> like, first thing. Like, I'm not fucking risking fire for some cheap-ass charger. Thirty-two years in law enforcement. Damn, Wayne. Where were you in law enforcement, Wayne? The guy that works next to us out at the flea market was a. Uh, he was an officer for. I think he said sixteen years or something after he got out of the military. He was out in I think Arizona or New Mexico. Yeah. Show them how it's really done, Micah. Gotta love those high-resistance USB cables. Damn right. We want all the power through this tiny-ass wire. non-MFI chargers? Yeah, exactly. I had a guy come to the flea market the other day, and I don't know if this is true or not. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know you were Australian. Wayne. What's up, Christopher? Could it be an iOS problem? iPhone 7 with no sound replace audio. I see two sound items. Man, um, the iPhone 7 audio issues. Goddamn, Paul. Just keep on doing your doing voice. Jesus Christ, man. Button ain't working. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. The connector's fucked. Yeah, and look at the cable. Yeah, I know the cable's all... cable's got a cut out of it. It's missing part of it. And it was just taped in to where it would have connected into, and it's not even... You can't connect it because the connector's screwed. Uh, Wayne... The board's going to have to come out. 1984, that was when I was born. You're a little older than me. Repairs are free? Yeah, you're going to have to talk to Paul on that one. Paul's over here just fucking going off on it. Thank you, Paul. How have you been, by the way? Have you done your... Uh, were they doing a surgery or were they doing injections or something to block the nerves in your back? Have you ever gotten anything with that? With that? <laughs> Anthony. Nineteen eighty four I was in junior high. God damn. Can you replace that without the board coming out or Yeah, I can. I was born in nineteen eighty four. I'm a youngin', evidently. I was born in eighty six. I was born in eighty six. Michael was born in the summer of 69. 50. 50 Celsius. Michael, that, that preheater back there sounds like your mom. Slow to get going, but once she is, goddamn. No, oh, there Nineteen ninety nine. Damn, youngin. Damn. I remember nineteen ninety nine. Will Smith was fucking as the kids would say, he was on fleek. 
Hell, I might be that kid's daddy. <laughs> what? I think I was like 12 then. Evidently, Micah was touring with White Snake. <laughs> yeah, that's Micah's jerking back there. Fifty this year. Well, congratulations. Uh, the audio problems. Um, the ones I've seen, I haven't found the solution for them. Uh, all the ones that have had audio problems, if we couldn't downgrade them, I told them to take it to Apple. Apple did something after that update that has really fucked with a lot of phones, and I don't know why some of them haven't returned to normal. But it's definitely caused some problems because um, we've seen much more issues after iOS 11 than before. We had seen a few iPhone 7s that had drop damage where they wouldn't boot. But nothing with touch, nothing with audio, nothing related to that. <laughs> Micah headlining for Whitesnake? Yeah. Micah is in a band that plays like, I don't know what year, I guess 80s, 80s uh, death metal or hair, hair metal or whatever you want to call it. Alright, so TriStar is working now. Uh, we're getting an amperage draw. Yeah, iOS 11 was a rush. I don't know why. I guess they had to get it out with the new phone, but man, it's been just a shitbox so far. Honestly, like, I've recommended that people don't upgrade to it if they're not having problems with their phone. But Apple kind of makes people do it. Not directly by forcing the update, but they kind of make it seem like it's required that you do it. Like, they make you schedule a time to do it if you tell it not now. Instead of saying, okay, we'll come back to you later. Um, it's it's kind of shitty for the customers because then... Customers get screwed over, and then what do you do? We had an iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, one of the other stores here in town, well, he's not a store. He just has a business, but um, a business that brings us phones all the time for repair. He brought an iPhone 6 Plus that he had done a screen on. After screen replacement, the audio wasn't working on the phone. Uh, he wasn't able to test it beforehand because the screen being broken. He only was able to test after and realized the speakers weren't working. He replaced both speakers and the bottom plex. Still no audio. Brought it to me. The microphones weren't working. The speakers weren't working. We replaced the audio IC twice. And both times uh, we would get audio one time. You could reboot the phone then there would be no audio. So um, it was on iOS 11. I told him, he was like, well, is, is there anything with the screen that could cause this? I was like, I highly doubt it. Uh, maybe if you, like, hit one of the lines or something, like an I2C day line or something. But I looked around, I couldn't really see any problem with them. Uh, nothing, nothing was off, and it was really odd that it would work sometimes, and other times it wouldn't. So, I told him to do a restore, backup restore he did. It still persisted. Um, I just told him to cut his losses and and just tell the lady that he couldn't fix it and give her money back. She was pissed off, though. How you doing, Paul? Yeah, Chuck, some people haven't had a single issue with iOS 11. Micah's on it, no problems. Ashley's on it, no problems. Um, but we've had some come in here that, that just don't, they don't work with it for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if maybe like Apple increased like tolerances that are required or something and even some of the untouched phones are having problems with it or what. But they changed something in the software that severely caused some issues. I don't know why they keep changing like the boot patterns and stuff too. Like iOS 10 introduced, whenever you hard powered them off, you would get that like residual screen effect, which was only common on the iPhone 9s whenever the CPU failed. 
now on the iOS 10, it happens when you hard reset the phone. Now with iOS 11, we're having the, the flicker on off when it's booting up. I mean, they're changing stuff in software that's affecting the hardware somehow. And uh, it's... I don't understand the point in it. I don't, I don't know why... iPhone 9? iOS 9. Did I say iPhone 9? Sorry. iOS 9. <clears throat> but... Hey, you beat the Hako. Um, what was Lewis's time on pulling the RAM chip with the Quick? Mine was 36 seconds or something like that. I guess it's not really the same comparison since this was an air. Thirty-two. Okay, that's within margin. So, I was watching Jessa's the other night. So, the JVC was forty-two seconds to remove the shield. And the Hakko or the uh, the quick was thirty two seconds, and what were we at? Like nineteen to twenty four seconds or something like that. So I mean, it just really depends on many factors, I would say, in that. But I I just wanted to show that as much shit as this little unit over here gets. It does everything that you need it to do. I, I don't think it's the best by any means. I, it's If I had a recommendation, if you have the money and you want to buy a good unit, the Quick Station is probably the best value for the features. <clears throat> if the AU unit had presets, I would have a hard time saying that the Quick was a better value. But the quick having the presets really sets it over the top for me. I would love to have presets. Yeah, the A52 is a great, great little unit. I, I haven't had any problems. We have two of them, and both of them work perfectly fine. I have an older AU968, which is the two in one station. Uh, it's the same pump and everything that's in the A52. It's just a, a soldering unit on both sides. So it has a has an iron on one side, which I used that 968 for three years doing MacBook repairs. So it's the iron on it is complete shit, by the way. It'll do the job, but it's not very good. All right, so let's hook up the screen, hook up the battery, and see if this thing charges. It should. Paul just bought me a quick with the last donation. Uh, I still need to get my programmer back. No plates put back in. What the fuck's he talking about? David wrote me and said no plates put back in. No plates put back in. Yeah, on what? Specter, I like your thinking. He would prefer to have the the Hako unit to sell it and then make more money. All right, so we have a charging symbol now, and we're pulling one amp on the uh, charging board over here. Let's see, you all can see it. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we're pulling point nine. It's nine hundred and eighty milliamps, so that's perfectly normal for that that amperage board so it was TriStar. <clears throat> we'll charge it up and test the battery and make sure that the battery is good. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about um, uh, our Lord Jesus no <laughs> um, if you 
have a shop and you aren't doing this yet, I highly recommend it just for the professional aspect and the re the repairability later on and stuff for the for the customer. Um, if you're buying batteries, buy good quality batteries and please buy the strips that go under them. It makes it much nicer to put in. It looks more professional. Um, buy seals, buy the 6S seals, buy the 7 seals. Put all that stuff back. It really, for me, it, it's become a thing where I really want to make sure that everything looks good. We even bought like all the replacement stickers for the front and back of the phones too for the uh, motherboard so that we can start making them look untouched. Just the set little extra thing just to make it a little better. Mobile centric batteries and battery strips. I buy their battery strips. I also buy them from Union Repair if I if I want to order a bunch of them. Um, <clears throat> we buy all our batteries from iFixit still. I've used mobile centric batteries in the bat in the past, and most of them are good. Um, we had a few returns from problems with the cells. Uh, I can say ever since we've gone to iFixit batteries, I've not had a problem out of any of them. All right, so we'll let that charge up. <laughs> uh, if you visit Bowling Green, do you get a free room at my house? Well, it, it, you'd be on the couch. I don't really have a. I don't really have a spare bedroom right now, unless you want to sleep in the the baby bed upstairs. Um, he asked if he could sleep at Micah's mom's house for free. <laughs> I fix them on ship batteries to Canada. Uh, probably something to do with uh, shipping across international stuff. International waters. <laughs> Not international waters. One out of four. Wayne can take the crib. Yeah, I mean, I fix it. I I can't complain about the quality. They've been pretty good. All right, so what's next on the list? Out of Wayne, Wayne, Brain, McCain. Let's see if we can get this headphone port out. I really wish I didn't have to unwrap this whole thing to get this off off out. Let's see if we can sneak it out of here. Getting it back in is next impossible though. We actually have had pretty good luck of buying MacBook batteries on uh, eBay, or not eBay, Amazon. Um, you have to look though, when you're on Amazon, there's certain companies that offer a 18 month warranty. <laughs> don't, don't listen to Micah. Uh, there's some that offer an 18 month warranty and we've had really good luck out of their batteries. They're about 80 to 90 bucks for the batteries and they offer a good warranty. We've not had one come back. Now, we bought some cheap ones in the past, and those fuckers didn't work at all. Oh, this thing looks like it's been fucked all nine, nine ways. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, it's deep in there. It's deep. Oh, molasses. And it's got fucking shit everywhere. He really did use Elmer's glue, didn't he? It's all down in the port. tweezers down in there that's all we need to be able to do all right so we're gonna try the first trick before we go and replace the whole charging port you can solder to these and attach a wire to them and yank them out it's it's kind of a pain in the dick sometimes to do but it is possible we've done a few a few of them this way this one's pretty deep though Usually the ones we solder wires to are not, not broken off at the very fucking last post. Now 
now getting solder to stick to it. It's going to be the fun part, too. The tip of the tweezers just doesn't carry much solder. I don't know if I can get the full size down in there. <coughs> yes, I'm taking any solder yet. The little pin on the inside has that. solder stuck to it. Let's get us a long piece of wire here and let it slide down in there. This real thin wire usually has enough tensile strength to get these out. Another for your baby bed mate. God damn it Paul. Thank you again. solder well enough. Oh man, it broke. Might have to go a little heavier. Usually I can yank them out with that, but it doesn't seem like it's going to hold up. We'll go to the 20-something gauge here. This port's probably not going to work anyway. I'm doing all this for nothing. going to have to take it all apart and replace it. Go ahead and tin this up here. phone is turning on it's charging before I melt my whole spool of wire here I hate when I do that I accidentally hit my spool of wire sometimes and melt it right in the middle so it starts raveling off in a separate spot and it really like I think that's probably one of the few things that I'm OCD about like if the wire is not coming off at the same spot it really bugs me let me use my belly here A small wooden dowel with a dab of epoxy. Uh, they actually make a tool to extract these. Um, I thought about buying it. It's a little sleeve that slides in around the uh, headphone jack portion. And then when you pull it out, the headphone jack stays inside the sleeve. I don't know where I've seen them, but I, I know I've seen them somewhere. Fuck you, melt. Stay on there. Keeps breaking off immediately as soon as I try to pull one. This one's gonna stick. Just not much to attach to here. Head out like a fetus. Head out first. Legs out first, whichever one's the wrong way. Am I gonna go out the wrong way? No. 
Yeah. I'll be honest, I don't know if that's going to come out with as much glue as in it anyway. You can see the glue, like, is caked in there. Like, it's down inside of it. Like, I don't even know if there's enough space for the headphone jack to come out. This is going to be one I'm going to have to open. Which sucks, because these LCDs are not fun. No fun. Put, make a U. Yeah. I just don't know that it's gonna it's gonna matter because once we pull this out, it's gonna suck. Right, Even if it does tomorrow. come out. All right, man. This one may be something we save for tomorrow. Let me see here. Let's see if I can get it open at least without destroying the LCD panel. Usually, I have pretty good luck with these. I'm going to say that and then I'm going to break it. So the way I attack these is I like to get on on either either side of the LCD panel. Get up under the edge of the glass. And then once I'm under the edge of that glass, I like to use my guitar pick and just work back and forth along the edge of that LCD panel. Then once I feel like I've gotten it kind of far enough down one side, I can go across the bottom edge. I don't use any heat on these normally. Um, Usually if you take your time, you can separate these fairly easily. So I've got one side of it now. It's kind of hard to see there. I'll switch this to the main view since you don't need the camera, uh, the microscope camera view. I think I'll have to add it. I was messing with it earlier, removing a bunch of them. We frozen up here. Oh, I'll click the wrong thing. My overlay. I shrunk my overlay down. What the fuck are we doing? Come on. Oh, let's see. select the overlay. Come on, little fucker. Why did it let's, let me adjust the size if it was locked? Okay, there we go. Now we gotta adjust all this shit. Then we need to rotate 180. Alright. So I've got this whole side lifted on the LCD. You can see all the way up the edge right here to the top. It's lifted. So I'm going to work my way past the home button. That's really the most scary point because it's really thin right there at that bottom edge. And I don't want to break it there. Because since that is a thin piece of glass, it does have more of a chance to break. Alright, so I'm starting to get the LCD fairly loose now. So where I go from here is I want to get up the other side of the frame. All this can be glued back. 
it's just tape pretty much that's holding it in place all right so now we've got I turned it on but we've got the LCD lost dream Stream should be going still. Okay, cool. Alright, so I accidentally turned it on there, but we'll turn it back off. Uh, LCD is still fine. But uh, once we work around the bottom there, which I already have, let me get back in here with my pick. So I've got the LCD completely separated up both sides now. There's one side, there's the other. So now that it's here, all you have to do is take your guitar pick or whatever you're using and push in on this plastic frame. Go all the way down and all the way up the other side. And once you push in on those, you can then separate it and open the whole assembly. So now that it's open, see this frame is, it's got adhesive down here at the bottoms. And then up the side, it's just a, it's hot glue pretty much, I think. It may be cold press, but you can put, you really don't even have to tape the edges. You can just tape the bottom and it'll hold it perfectly fine. But you can tape the edges too. So first thing we need to do whenever you open these up, uh, especially on like the six gens and stuff, you need to make sure you get this camera out of the holder. So we got the camera loose now, so you can see the camera is out there. If you damage these on the iPod Touch 6 gens, good luck finding a replacement because I I don't unless they're the same as the the fifth gen, which I don't think they are. Uh, you can't fucking you can't find a replacement for them. Which this is the six gen based on the home button and based on the paperwork. You hate working on them? They're not too bad. You always go from the sides and release the adhesive. You don't have to pull the frame. Uh, I always found trying to dig in and get the plastic to release, it just was too much of a risk of breaking. Um, plastic edge really doesn't do much for it as far as like holding it in place. You've seen two six gens? Yeah, we don't see many of them. We've seen maybe five or six. Uh, we've seen quite a few fifth gens, uh, all screen replacement stuff. Some of them charging for it. We've had a few TriStar ones. Uh, we've had a few NAND ones. Um, So I'm going to get my last screws out here. I'm probably not going to do this replacement tonight. Um, I don't even know if we have the 6th gen ports, if they're the same. I don't think they're the same as the 5th. Uh, I may have to order this port. But I'll check. But I'm probably going to do this replacement tomorrow. Um, I downloaded the new South Park game last night and I've been wanting to play it. I played it for about an hour last night. Alright, so if you've never seen the inside of an iPod, they're fairly simple. Uh, battery flex comes and folds over the top of the, the board here. The charge port flex is soldered here and folds under, runs down under the battery, and then it connects to all this shit down here. Uh, LCD flexes are folded up and behind the screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull this completely so you can see how I access them. Um, the easiest way I found without dicking with everything is to start from the bottom of the iPod and work your way up. Take out all your screws on the motherboard and the bottom charge port, 
unhook the charge port, lift the battery, and flip the whole thing upside down. Um, you can put the LCD screens on these without doing that, but it's just a pain trying to get them to plug in. So I found that it's easier just to flip the whole assembly over. Um, I don't speak whatever. <laughs> South Park butthole? You mean fractured butthole? Okay, so we've got all our screws out of the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen everything up by just kind of pressing it backwards a little bit. <clears throat> Alright, so it's moved back some. Let's see if I can finish getting the charging port out. Okay, so the charging port is up now. I'm going to take the screws out of the motherboard. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately I can't read the language, I'm sorry. I think it's Spanish, but I'm not sure. Okay, so now that we have the screen, or the charging port kind of loosened here, there's a pull tab if you lift up the ear speaker. There's a pull tab right there for the battery. So you can grab that, just like the iPhones. You can grab that pull tab and just pull straight out. And that'll release one side of the battery. And then we can take and lift up the battery a little bit. And the other side has just a, a uh, it has a pull tab at the top, but I'm not sure how exactly you get to it. But you can usually just use something and press through it and get to the other side. And then if you flip it over, see we now have access to everything on the back side of the board. So we have the charge flex and everything flipped upside down from where it was originally. And now we can just go in. Uh, we have to keep in mind that this board is still powered since it has the battery connected. And we can go in and unhook all of these um, connectors off the back. And that way we don't rip anything. So now we have two separate assemblies. We've got the top flexes and everything here, which are easily hooked back up by just placing it right here. You wanted to ban someone? Portuguese? Okay. Uh, so now, with that screen separate, we can just peel the adhesive. And now you have a separate screen and motherboard. And then, to change the charging port, you can lay them out on your board and you can peel back your covers here. And you have access to the charging port flex. <coughs> so... Spinning wheel. Uh, it's dropped quite a bit of frames. Uh, EFI is not exactly the same as iCloud. You can remove EFI. It's a local lock. Um, EFI is not a cloud-based lock. It's only local to the uh, e or the not the EEPROM the BIOS. Um, I don't know how the newer ones work with iCloud and EFI locks. I don't know if they're tied together now. Um, I know in the older ones they weren't, but now they may be. Uh, that I'm not sure of. I don't know why YouTube's buffering. I mean, I've dropped some frames, but not many. But anyway, so that's pretty much going to conclude it for tonight. I figured we could show a little cool teardown of an iPod. And show that I'm not just all about soldering. I can actually do some of the, the repair work stuff too. 
Uh, I did a lot of this simple like tear down stuff for a long time. Um, I'm still decent at it, but yeah, if you want to remove an EFI lock, most likely it's stolen. Not always, but there's a good chance that it probably is. Um, that's kind of a gray area. This is the TriStar for Anthony. It's now on. It's at 17%. Uh, let's go ahead and hook it up to the computer real quick. I'm going to see if the... I have a UFS reader. I, I do have a UFS reader, but I don't have a socket for it. I'm still waiting for them to ship that back. I gotta call them again because the last two times I've called they haven't answered. And I'd really like to get my $300 socket back. No offense to them. Alright, so let's go ahead and trust this computer. Trusted. Let's go ahead and pull up our secondary view so you all can see that. Alright, so looking at it, it's got 388 charge cycles, but the battery life on it seems to be good. It's showing 96%. It's only a 4% drop from original. So, you sent me a customer who needs S6 data? Uh, that's fine. I mean, I'm trying to get this socket back as soon as possible. Uh, if I have to, I'll pay the shipping for him to send it back. But, Miles, I'm trying to get it back. It's. It's been an absolute nightmare since I bought that machine. Which iPod was it? It was a 6th gen iPod Touch. But battery on this one looks okay, so I would say, Anthony, you're good to go on the battery. I don't see any problems with it, so. We're going to put the shields in this one and call it a day. I'm going to go home. <laughs> See you, Paul. Thanks for the donations, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, definitely don't ban Paul, even if he's just here. You don't have to donate a dime, Paul. If you just show up and participate, we're all pleased. Paul is a mod. He should be. Is he not? No, he's not. I need to make Paul a mod. Paul's been here for a while. It's crazy how much we've grown. Like, I don't know how many people watch all the time. I know that we normally get about 40 to 60 people that watch whenever we're live. But we definitely have increased our, our subscription basis of people, which is awesome. Now nobody can ban you, unless it's me. I can ban you, Paul. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm gonna put this one, close it up here. We wanna be making money like you. Well, Jackie, hopefully this information can help you do that. Um, hopefully any of this information that I've given out will help you make some money. I, my personal experience when I came into this industry, um, I started out like Tim does. I, I worked on Max for a while. I probably don't know as much as Tim or Lewis as far as like, like the details of Max. I can make them work. I can read the schematic. I can kind of figure out what's wrong with it. Um, I'm still not an expert at any means with Max. Um, if Max were a bigger option around where I live, I probably would have stayed with it more. Uh, but it's more a secondary thing now. Um, but Jessa, honestly, was probably the first one that got me interested in micro-soldering. Because I saw Jessa doing it on, on videos on YouTube. 
Uh, same way with Lewis, that's how I started in all of this. Uh, I started out doing like screen replacements and stuff, and then one day I was like, man, there's got to be a way to make better money so I can support myself and don't have to like eat ramen and shit every night and eat hamburger helper every night. So um, I got on YouTube. A friend had a MacBook that was broken. I was like, well, hell, somebody's got to have something out there why this thing has no green light. See you, Paul. But uh, I, I got on YouTube and I searched for the MacBook number and no green light and sure as hell... Uh, Lewis just happened to have a channel where he had uh, started putting up videos. Um, I think it was probably the first, maybe the early second year that he had been on YouTube that I, I found him. And I subscribed from there and just started watching. And uh, I bought Macs off of eBay that were liquid damaged and fixed them. And had a really good success rate at doing it. So it was something I did for a while. And then... I saw Jessa doing phones. I was like, man, there's no fucking way I can do phones. I was like, that's so small. Like, to me, it was just, like, inconceivable to go from, like, working on stuff that's, like, working on components that are, like, this big, like, these package sizes on Macs, and then uh, dropping down to iPhone or iPad sizes. It was, it was just mind-boggling to me. And uh, you're eating Fruity Pebbles out of the back. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with hamburger helper but like literally for a long time i lived paycheck to paycheck like i would i would make enough money to make it to the next week like that's where i was and it's not it's not bad i mean i had a lot more free time when i wasn't working all the time but uh it sucks kind of living that way for a while and like this this kind of work opened up a lot of opportunities for me and i'm hoping that by like teaching some of this stuff that it opens up opportunities for other people and it strengthens the community i think like before a lot of these youtube streams and stuff were around i feel like the community was kind of dispersed like there were a few people that did it but nobody really talked about it like there weren't a lot of people that were like hey what do you know about this or what do you know about this like there, were, there was the GSM forums, and there was a lot of misinformation there, and then a lot of knowledgeable people there. But it was kind of hard to weed through all the bullshit. And um, I think, like, the YouTube phenomenon, I would call it almost, is, is really helping the industry. I think that the forums that we have are really helping the industry, like, expand, sharing knowledge, like, people just learning and stuff from that. Um it's i don't think for myself i truly appreciate how far i've come personally i i don't really like boast about like knowing shit or anything i try to be pretty humble about it because i don't know everything like i'm still learning shit daily there's people that know stuff that i have no clue about um but that's just kind of my background chris what do you use for invoice and keeping track of items uh, we have a terrible system and we use QuickBooks. <laughs> uh, we need to, we're actually looking and trying to get a better system for keeping track of everything. You used to live borrowed advanced paycheck to paycheck, yeah. I know people that live that way too, Spectre, and it it sucks. You get behind and you'll never catch up that way unless you just unless you start making more money. That's about the only way you can get around it. Check out working point. Okay. We've been looking into Repair Shopper, too. We need a better point-of-sale system and a better system for inventory and stuff. But anyway, I think that's going to end the stream. Um, hopefully it was enjoyable. Hopefully educational. Hope you learned something. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for sure. Hopefully we have a charging port for this one. I think we do, but if not, I'll order it. Um, Mobile Centric is usually two days. I can have it. What about Repair Shopper? Uh, we're looking into it. Okay, Martin. Appreciate it. But anyway, I'm going to head home. The girlfriend just messaged me and asked me what we're doing for dinner. Uh, so I guess I'm going to go home and cook something or we'll go grab something. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, no problem, Trinity. I'm glad I could help. We'll tear this one down a little further tomorrow too so you can see the... Uh, there's not much more to it, but I'll kind of show you around the board a little bit. Uh, but... I will see you all later, and have a good night. Thank you all for joining me.
Bye.